you could clear the desks, that would probably be better, actually. Morning, everyone. I think we just need to take a moment um, because today's lesson is dedicated to the memory of poor old Alphonse the camel. He died so that we can explain history better. So let's make sure his death isn't in vain. What we're going to be doing today is to try and put the principles behind the Alphonse lesson and the thinking and analysis that they've done in that lesson into a real historical context because that's ultimately the point of doing exercises like Alphonse. I know James wants the kids to be able to talk about different, the different role that factors play in a story in the case of Alphonse and also in the subsequent lesson on, in the case of the First World War. If you remember last time you did some really good work explaining why it was that poor old Alphonse died, how it came to be that he died of this terrible back injury. What I'd like you to do please is just to think about how you might draw a diagram to show that process. Specific causes show the links, how did they come together to cause Alphonse's death. Can't I do it like in time order of what happened first and not there? Okay, death. so you do some sort of time order. Okay, yeah. okay, so that's a good start, chronological. Then think about how things are connected, maybe bigger than chronological themes. Perhaps there are themes and patterns and some things happen together and then later on affected something else. But yeah, chronological is a good start. The, the key thing, I think, and and I know James would agree, is to ensure that your lessons anticipate expertise, provide scope for often those who are not expecting to shine, to really surprise you. How do I structure and plan a lesson in order that everyone in the room uh, has access to that challenge? And it's a question, the way I sort of approach it, it sounds a little cheesy, but it's about not access and challenge, but access to the challenge. So what are you trying to show <coughs> with this <coughs> diagram then? What, what's the big pattern that you're trying to show with that diagram? Um, I'm trying to show that if you have that a few primary things, yeah, that, that if, if they carry on like that, they, they get, they become sort of, they like expand until okay. you get to the point where Alphonse dies. Okay. So they kind of lead on to other problems. Okay. So they're expanding, but they're also, and they're expanding, they're leading to other problems. Are they doing something more as well? What, why draw these lines? Like that they're one they're combining as well, yeah. Okay. Okay, excellent, excellent. I like that a lot. Very good idea. I think in a particular lesson, at a particular moment, any student can potentially produce very, very high level analysis, very sophisticated analysis, which might at that particular moment be something which conventionally you would attribute to a gifted and talented student, but they might not always be able to do it, and we want to give everyone the opportunity to really fly. I do this, did this triangle thing, and it split into littler ones. And on the bottom are the main big problems, and then they it gradually get smaller over time, sort of, and um, they all build up onto one another, leading to the straw and the death and everything into these triangles. Okay. When you say building up, how have you decided which cause should go on top of which other cause? Is there a connection there? Well, um, the straw should probably go on the very, very top because that was the um, end thing. That okay. And then at the bottom came um, like Frank's accident with the camel and, and then Frank's attitude towards camels and all that. Okay, great, great. Ali, would you mind explaining your diagram for us? I've got like time going along and like different lines just to show that it's moving on. And then um, like dots on the time where like certain dots would be bigger to shift they're like more important okay. or like smaller dots okay. and then that's interesting like links to like line them up and then they all go along and then they all kind of eventually lead into the one dot which is like death okay so you've got lots of those dots then eventually combining together yeah okay, okay. it did help because it helped us understand how to order the events into priorities and things it kind of helped like understand the like whole thing like more because it was it was another example of small things adding up to a big cause. What I'd like you to do now, um, every pair has three sets of cards. The blue cards which we saw last time with Alphonse are those words that you were playing with and experimenting with and organising according to whether they showed a different type of cause. Your yellow cards are various causes of the First World War. What I'd like you to do 
with those cards is to arrange them in some way which is an explanation of why the First World War broke out. <laughs> the students have previously written an essay answering the question, did two bullets, i.e. the assassination of Franz Ferdinand, cause 20 million deaths? Start with the yellow cards first, spread them out, <coughs> and then start to see how they're connected. What would be great to see, and, and fingers crossed this is, this is what will happen, is that students will, in the light of Alphonse, think actually maybe, maybe my emphasis there was wrong, or perhaps I didn't fully explain that link properly, or perhaps actually I misunderstood the nature of that cause. And having thought about Alphonse, maybe the assassination had a different role from the one I previously thought. And that's the ultimate, I think. If we can get there, that would be, that would be brilliant. So why did, why did Austria-Hungary's attack on Serbia motivate Russia to... Because they had an alliance uh, okay. Serbia. OK. So do we need perhaps another? We need maybe to build in the alliances somehow. Yeah. What's the relationship between the alliances and this threat? Um, if there weren't the alliances, then that wouldn't have happened. OK, great. So we need the alliances for that to happen. Is there a word which could show that? Or contributed. So the alliance system contributed to its threat. OK, go on, talk us through. What are you thinking, Gordon? Well, if the alliance system wasn't there, then they wouldn't have um, threatened Austria-Hungary. OK, OK. Maybe think about whether this a line doesn't always work, does it? You might want to think, guys, about whether a line always works. Maybe you need branches or groups. Ryan and Gordon have found that a single line doesn't really work. It has, causes problems. It's not enough just to have one isolated lesson and expect suddenly students to make sense of everything that's ever happened in history and be able to explain it. Um, it needs it needs to be integrated. It needs to be developed as much as part as any anything in your schemes of work. Well, the ongoing task, and you know there are many, but one of them in history is certainly to develop kids' vocabulary and conceptual apparatus. We want them to be able to make finer and finer distinctions over time. This lesson is providing language that will enable that. Language can subsequently be sophisticated further. Now, what's the connection? What word could we use to connect Austria-Hungary's control of Bosnia? Prompted. Provoked. Prompted. Provoked is nice. Why is provoked different from prompted? Because um, provoked is like they've done something, so they're doing something to like overcome it. Yeah, great. And what's the mood? If someone's provoked, what's their mood? How do they feel? Kind of like angry. Great. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so we've got some anger, some provocation. Excellent. So we could put that maybe... And then... Next. Is next any good? Mm. We just say assassination, next. Austria attacked Serbia. Is that any good? Well, it makes sense, but not really. It's not um, I strong enough. No. Go on. So what? What does next not explain? How? Um, like, because if that hadn't happened, then. So next doesn't really work. So what do we? What do we need then instead? Rather than next, it did happen next, but that doesn't show how triggered works, doesn't it? Yeah, triggered's good. Okay, great. What you love to see is that moment of revelation where a student just sort of suddenly spots something, suddenly works something out that previously hadn't made sense to them. And, and that's what lessons like this are designed to achieve. Ryan and Gordon, would you mind perhaps picking out part of your diagram which you found or your arrangements which you, you had difficulties with or problems with or you disagreed with or you changed your mind? Or Germany invaded Belgium and France which um, like led to Kaiser Wilhelm's jealousy of Britain's navy and empire. Okay. Which then accelerated British fears of an invasion by Germany. So okay. they started building new battleships, which prompted competition. Okay. And then like, that eventually <coughs> triggered the war okay, great. between the two countries. That's, so you're saying that British fears were accelerated. We're not sure whether accelerated is quite the right word, though. I agree with your thinking, but is accelerated the best word for describing someone's fears getting worse? What word could you use instead? Perhaps? Broadened. Broadened might work, so they're worried about other things. It is a gradual process, and sometimes students' understanding needs refining. Um, Ryan needed to rethink his choice of acceleration, accelerated. But that's fine, that's, you know, that's, that's the point. If they got it straight away, then you, it's maybe not sufficiently challenging. We've put competition between different countries, um, accelerated. 
Britain's building of new battleships. That makes a lot of sense, yeah. Um, which broadened, kind of, um, like made bigger, like Kaiser Wilhelm's jealousy, which motivated Germany's invasion. That's nice, that's nice. So we need a word then, don't we, for it broadens his jealousy. What could we say well, makes bigger his jealousy? Well, and the idea works, but what's a good word for that? Because we were kind of wanted to use like multiplied, but we'd already used that. And okay. Um, <laughs> I think we maybe need to think, I'm not sure there's a word in those cards, I think we yeah. maybe need to come up with a, a new word. Provoke for you. No, I don't think that's provoke, because provoke kind of means like start off, but it needs to be like made bigger, like increased, okay. but not really, inc I don't know, it could be... It was quite interesting to see that they knew that they didn't have the right word, and that in itself is progress. Maybe I need to think about introducing new words to them, to tackle that, where they have an idea which is forming and it's embryonic which they can't yet quite fully articulate. If you've got a word which is sort of built to describe a certain thing, then you can use that word. And you don't have to go about laughing like, <laughs> like this. I had nationalism, militarism and imperialism. And they kind of conflict with each other because you can't have an empire without conflicting with someone else's nationalist views. Excellent. And there's this, and because you've got that conflict, it builds up. And I thought the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand was the trigger which, which then led to the, um, what's the word, Austria-Hungary's control of, you know, Austria-Hungary's control of Bosnia, so Bosnia wanted to be part of Serbia, so that had, that's why they, that's why Austria-Hungary attacked Serbia. Um, then the alliance system kicks in, but then Germany came in because of the alliance system, because of Russia and stuff like that, and okay. so it kind of spreads across the globe. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. So it's, it's, the, it's the scale and the number of countries involved. Okay, excellent. Ex A good answer has formal features. It's conceptually sophisticated, it argues about importance, it knows the story, knows the details, and can mobilise those to prove a point. What I really want us to think about now is why on earth we've done this. So why have we spent so much time talking about a dead camel and really focusing on your language and your words? Well, before this year, I just thought, oh, um, it was a guy who just went into Austria-Hungary who just shot Franz Ferdinand and then all hell break loose kind of thing. But then I learned about the elephant story and then how each event kind of combined to make one big thing and about how alliance systems worked and Kaiser Wilhelm's competition with Britain and stuff like that. I think two bullets triggered World War One, but I don't think they caused it because like um because they weren't they, they like like they like released the pressure and like let the things the two like sides at each other. It like like there were like two balloons and the two bullets just burst one of them and it kind of got them against each other. Great work, you're a bit late guys, so if you pack up, go straight away, thank you. I think what would be really nice to see, and we started to see it today, is to see that students can recognise that there are different ways of explaining the same process and that they're not necessarily better or worse than any other, but perhaps that one form of explanation helps to understand a different aspect of that process. It's like you'd have to understand all the people, so I don't think we'll ever be able to understand all of history, but we could like interpret it to like what makes sense, but we can't understand every single person in the world, so I don't think we can ever understand all of history.